snowball that lane. If left alone. But speaking of the Thresh, there it is. And the last pick coming out on uh, Legacy Ambassadors was the Swain. So we'll be seeing a Thresh Ezreal bot lane. And <laughs> Lord knows I very much despise an Ezreal pick. Ezreal is one of those champions that just doesn't synergize with any of my supports because I'm a support main. So it's like when you're playing champions like Thresh, Leona, Nautilus, Blitz, because I play all the hook champions. Um, it, it, he just doesn't synergize very well with them because he can't take full advantage of the amount of CC that they provide. Ezreal wants to sit back and scale, but most AD carries in the current meta, when you're looking at Draven, Kai'Sa, Caitlyn, even Misfortune, who are all really good early game champions, he just can't stack up to them, especially without having a proper keystone for him, which they're, which I believe Riot is really trying to push for the Omnistone to be a viable keystone now. Uh, Echo. We'll see if that is being picked into the mid or the jungle in the next couple seconds when they decide on their last pick. That may be but, a pick to deny Echo from Death Griffin. Because we've seen Death Griffin on Echo a couple of times. I can't see them picking it when their top and mid are already chosen because the support was really the only thing that was left. But we do see a Kiana coming out, which means that Kiana will most likely be mid laner with Echo Jungle and Mordekaiser top is the way I can be, is the way I, I see it. But we'll find out in a couple seconds with this last pick coming in, which looks like it will probably be a Nami, which rounds out the team comp really well, actually. Because you have Renekton and Swain for your wave clear, you have your AP coming from Swain, Amumu, and Nami, and then your front line of Amumu and Renekton. So it's going to be very, and Nami to keep Vayne safe, it's going to be very difficult to, it, like if Kiana and Echo cannot get to Vayne, it's going to be very difficult uh, for Iron Dragon to pull ahead, or to pull ahead later into this game. Because because uh, I think Legacy Ambassador scales much harder than uh, Iron Dragon here. Although you are looking at the Ezreal, who I still believe is one of the strongest late game AD carries, despite my stigma against him. Um, Do you think that the uh, like the bot lane on the side of Legacy uh, Ambassadors is uh, a better matchup than the Ezreal threat? For a better um, uh, I think that the better synergy is on the side of Legacy Ambassadors with the with key cakes on Bane and, and diamonds on Nami because Nami is able to really uh, peel off Thresh really well, especially like if uh, the hook is missed from Thresh, it gives all of the pressure to Vayne and Nami to just walk up and do whatever they want because they don't really have any peel tools besides Thresh's flay to, and uh, to do uh, an Ezreal's arcane shift to really walk out of fights. But if Ezreal's using arcane shift to get out of the fight, then what? Uh, <laughs> they're not really looking to do damage there. Because early game Vayne does more damage than Ezreal. I think Vayne just does more damage than Ezreal all game long if they scale at the same time. But Ezreal becomes a better champion later into the game because he's able to poke people out before and he doesn't have bat all in. Depending on the build, of course, because if you go, uh, it's a lot of, but I'm, I'm focusing really hard on the bot lane right now, but really like the mid lane is, is, is going to be, the mid and jungle rolls on uh, Iron Ambassador, um, Iron Dragon, sorry. Is looking Mark, like Mark, 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 Mark Bello, Mark I'm Am I on the wrong game again? I am, it is Mark Cabello from Siren Dragon. I've been messing that up. Stay, uh, wait, no, it's not. It's Mark Cabello versus Legacy Ambassador. Please hit me over, over the side of the head if I make that mistake again. <laughs> no. I, get, I get a little bit too excited like when I start talking about like team comps and stuff, I forget who's playing. Iron Dragon is fun to watch. We'll have to just wait mm -hmm. for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so excited for tomorrow's game. Because I really want to see Iron Dragon. Like, the game that I'm most excited for is Iron Dragon, which, uh... Versus Endgame. It was, like, the, the, the highlight game that I was looking forward to. Yeah, true. 
but we are focusing here on Iron Dragon again. Just, uh... Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello, Martin Cabello against Legacy of Path. Oh my god, I will get this right. I thought you were a Martin Cabello fan club supporter. I am a Martin Cabello fan club supporter, but it's like when I'm when I'm looking at team comps, I'm not looking at the names and 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 team names and stuff like that. I'm looking at oh Echo does well into a Mumu. Uh, Tiana does well into Swain. Oh, uh, Ezreal, Ezreal Thresh struggles against Vayne Nami. I'm like, I'm looking at that and thinking of it that way instead of like, oh, Witchblade is, is an amazing jungler and he sh might be able to outdo Death Griffin. That guy is, Renek that guy is really good on Renekton. So Minipod is going to have a, a, a tough time here in the top lane. Stuff like that. Like, it, it's a, just a different mindset that I have. Of course, of course. All right, as we roll into the game here, I'm going to uh, quickly invoke all of you who are listening to give us a follow. We're trying to get to 50 follows so that we can reach affiliate status and open up uh, subscriberships so that we can provide uh, subscriber emotes so you can uh, have emotes to support your favorite teams. So uh, be sure to hit that follow button, and if you have already, maybe send the link to the stream to a friend. And now that that's out of the way, uh, I guess we're looking here at the roof. We're... nothing seems out of the ordinary except for the electrocuted Amumu. Everything else seems to be about standard, including the Conqueror Ezreal, which I still feel like even though Omnistone isn't the greatest, I still feel like it's better than uh, Conquer on Ezreal. And it's and like looking deeper into it, a lot of uh, Korea, a lot of Koreans are opting into the Opti Omnistone now for Ezreal as well. But there's a lot of threats on the side of Martin Cabello. Between Kiana, Echo, like everybody on their team is a problem. It's a very powerful pick where Thresh's pick making, pick making and playmaking skills are really strong. Ezreal can just sit in the back and they can't really stick to him too well. Uh, Kiana just does a lot of damage. Uh, Ezreal is just really out here. And if Amumu doesn't get a, a nice ultimate off, it's going to be very difficult for uh, anybody else to really keep him from ulting out of, out of stuff. And then you have Mordekaiser, who is Mordekaiser, so <laughs> he's just going to ult somebody and take them out of the fight regardless. Minions have spawned. It looks like a tournament standard for here. We're going to see the stacking of or near the bot side river. But there's a separation going out, and uh. Game Slave is uh, playing the ward for Legacy Ambassador. And both early wards in the river are out on the, on the side of Martin Cabello. With the usages coming from uh, from Minipod and Witchblades, which means that neither of them will have wards for about uh, four minutes. Standard starts across the board. Mid laners have met up already, and. Uh, a little bit of a weak-ish leash for Witchblades. But still a weakish for both teams. This might even being forced out from Death Griffin to make sure he doesn't die to this uh move up here. This Death Griffin looks like he had to leave the wolves and back to avoid being executed. That's a really really bad start. 
simple simple mistakes on the side of uh, Legacy Ambassador is going to put their jungler behind. Death Griffin also didn't hit level 2. Oh, I see what happened. A certain somebody by the name of Death Griffin forgot to buy items. Oh. Well, that'll do it every time. Mm -hmm. A lot happening, a lot of action here in this top lane. That guy going in with the Ruthless Predator and Minipod answering in, in tandem. Two of them and are about half HP now. In mid lane, Witchblades tries to gank onto Gameslave, but uh, they do not secure the kill. They do uh, manage to pull the flash out, and he's back to and picks finish. up the first board. Death Griffin looking to hold the mid wave or push the mid wave. I don't know where he's going. He's heading towards his bot side, but it looks like Witchblades is going to be picking up the crab and possibly looking towards his top lane. Still no ward out. Or a ward back up on the side on both the top and mid of Martin Cabello. And it looks like Witchblades is looking for that guy here. If he plays it right, they, he might just get him. Flash blown up from Iron Minipod. Vayne going down, Suitcase going down on the, bot, on the bot side. Unable to pick up Minipod, but that guy is flashes out. Witchblades is still looking for him. Phase Dive is available for him to catch up to him. Flash blown. Passive procced, but doesn't stick to him. And, it's that, and guy. that guy goes, like, picks up Witchblades. It was a little just miscalculation on the side of Witchblades. He had that. He, I, he just, I don't know if he misclicked or just assumed that he was going to get it off the pass to proc, but he goes down, and which gives Death Griffin a chance to kind of get back in this game. Depending on how he, Death Griffin plays it here. But we can't mull over the fact that or that Keith Cakes also just uh, went down in the bot lane, which means that uh, Misfits' is Ezreal picks up Tear on his way back, which means he will be spell singing those cues for quite some time now. Those Mystic Shots will start to hurt. And as long as he has mana, he will continue to do so. Death Griffin looking for a gank on to Appreciate Me's Kiana, but is unable to find it. Game Slayer able to land, um, never move on to Kiana, but nothing much comes out of that. Troll Noob lands a hook on a keep case. But, well, uh, the manages to walk away. And is able to walk away. Still very standard starts uh, around here, nothing too excessive. It looks like Minipod opting for a little bit of armor to start off to survive against that guy's Renekton. CS lead in favor of mid-bot mid so far. On the side of uh, Martin Cabello. And a 1k gold lead for Martin Cabello so far. Obviously, still pretty early. Death Griffin go looking for the gank on mid lane. He's in perfect position to hit it. But is taken down immediately by Appreciate Me. Not respecting the damage at all or waiting for Game Slaves to walk up and start the play. It's going to be huge for Appreciate Me now. Now that, uh, oh, no buffs were transferred actually. So I think it's not the worst thing in the world.
pulls a new playing a ward in bot lane right now. I don't think he has one. He does have one. I don't know why he doesn't place it in one way. But um, Death Griffin is on the bot side of the map currently. Still a level down to Witch Blades. Last cone taken away, which is a gank option taken from Death Griffin to come down. Uh, death Sentence landing onto a mid. Taking it anyway, granting getting an empowered auto on to Keith Cakes, but it doesn't seem like anything else will come out of that. Death Sentence is back up, and it will not find another champion. Red buff is being taken on the side of Mark Tubello away from Legacy Ambassador, so Death Griffin will not have a red buff this side of, on this side of the map, and it looks like Game Save might sense that something is going on, but nothing comes out of it. Mini pod with no TP is there. That guy is looking towards Mini pod to see if he can get a really heavy trade going on, which he does. The Death Grasp not landing from Mordekaiser, which would have turned into a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Witchblades, uh, and appreciate me, are playing aggressively on a game slate, but just pushing it back under the turn. Unable to find any. Trolled a noob, hooked in um, Keef Cakes, and forced the flash out, but uh, Ezreal's ult was still able to finish the kill down the bottom. Another death sentence landing on to Diamond's Tsunami, but is and is forced to flash away. Trolled a noob really out here on the playmaking support, trying to look and find make every play that he can with his death sentence, landing as many of these as he can. Already with 34 souls, this is a huge armor buff to him. So is that about this, the standard of where most supports would be around, around now? Because the way that, uh, that ooh, another fight happening in the mid lane, the ult landing on to Game Slaves, and Witchblade's able to pick up the kill right before with the phase dive right before. Forced to blow Flash to pick it up, but he does pick it up as well as an extra Dark Harvest Act for his troubles. Death Griffin coming into the mid lane to see to catch the wave before it crashes into the tower. Actually, ends up clearing the entire wave. I don't know if that was the move for him, but it definitely works in his favor because he makes up some of that lost XP between him and, uh, and Witchblades. Despite all the action happening in top lane, Witchblade, uh, Minipod only being down uh, 12 CS to that guy's run engine, but still down to because of that and the kill that was given over to him. A fight happening down in the bot lane, Condemn landing on the Misfits to the wall. Control the news play coming up right now. He lands the invisible hook onto Keefcakes' vein, forcing her to go down again. Keefcakes is not having a wonderful time down here in this bot lane with a 3 0 Misfits. Uh, Marco Bell is using that. Kill to try to turn onto the dragon, but several members of Legacy are around. It doesn't look like they're gonna walk up and try to uh, contest and indeed. I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't think they go for that. Uh, Legacy ambassadors go for that anyway with four healthy members of Martin Capello. But it seems as though the fight is not over. Death Sentence landing, causing Death Griffin to go down almost immediately. The play making sure that Game Slave also going down as well. And all three members that were still standing around, including Diamonds go to the side of Iron Dragon. You're right that Legacy Ambassadors didn't want that fight. Mara Cabela definitely wanted it, and they found it. The power of wards is very strong power. Oh, and a hook onto Vayne. Uh, Keep case. Trilla was standing like... in the tribe. Oh. And they are able to get it. Wow. All of that calculated aggression that people keep talking about is really paying off, especially with the vision, the vision that's placed there that that ward is also going to pick up the the mod's diamonds here. But they are able to get that... Ooh, they're not able to get that last plate, but 
Death Griffin is here to see if he can pick this up with two players who don't really do an absurd amount of damage, but the Banish ultimate does not land. is available from Death Griffin, but it's just not being used at all. Misfits just able to put out a lot of damage and take down oh. diamonds before Miss uh, Troll the Noob's now coming up to see if he can land the hook. Oof. A half second later and he would have landed that. Which would have spelled death for Death Griffin. But it seems as though Griffin is not quite done here. Uh, Game Slave was able to take down Appreciami's Kiana while all that was happening, and Minipod is looking towards the top the top tower. Able to land the Death Grass, but not able to really capitalize on it at all. That that guy's Renekton is 2-0 now. With a TM mat and is looking to see if he can put more damage down on a mini pod, but it doesn't seem like he is able to hold him down with a lot of damage. So Game Slave's kill under Kiana notwithstanding, uh Mark Hill Fan Club has gone up eleven to two and has about a four four to five thousand gold. Do you see uh what path do you see for Legacy Ambassadors to get back into this game if they want? If Legacy Ambassadors wants to get back into this game, they're definitely going to have to start making some plays around the map in terms of the way that they need to roam and rotate with Death Griffin. Because Death Griffin's ultimate is the key to this game. If, if Death Griffin gets off some really nice ultimates with that guy's Renekton around, it's going to spell a lot of trouble for Iron, Iron, uh, Iron Dragon here. But it doesn't seem like they're going to get the chance for the next couple of minutes, seeing as how Witchblades is steps on a ward on his way over to see if he can do anything about that guy. Still staying in the bush, waiting for it. The death grass landing, but the double slice and dice able to get that guy to safety, knowing that Witchblaze was here. Uh, Witchblaze might look towards this here Rift Herald, but is also going to make it very difficult for, if they use it right, for Legacy Ambassadors to get back into this game because like I said Death Griffin needs to be making plays with that guy that's the strong side of the map this is top side if he's making plays up there and able to play around game slave and that guy with their ultimates that their guy's coming down really to strong. try to uh it's a 2v3 situation are able to take down see this is exactly what I was talking about good ultimates coming from Death Griffin caused that and now Minipod does take Death Grip into the Death Realm and will should be able to pick that up, but will not be able to get any more. That's three, as well as the Ezreal somehow going down. I didn't see that play, but uh, Misfits was taken down. That kill looked like it went over two diamonds. Diamonds is not me. But this goes back to what I was saying before. If if Griffin plays around his top and mid, which are his strong his strong laners right now, and is able to get good ultimates off, Witchblade was unable to ult in that fight because of Death Griffin's ultimate. And it was just blown up by that guy and Game Slave. Really, really clean play coming from them. And the only reason that Death Griffin went down in the first place was because Minipod still had uh, <laughs> the Death Realm ready for him. Dragon's up in uh, just a few seconds here. We're seeing the things start to come out. Which is Iron Dragon's going to start looking towards this dragon. And the 5,000 gold lead was cut down to about three and a half. The dragon was started by Iron Dragon, but now they're going to force Legacy Ambassadors to walk up into them. No ultimate available from Death Griffin, but Witchblade is forced to take the lantern out. Witchblade gets back on it and is able to secure the dragon, but it and is able to ult to safety. This is not a fight that uh, Martin Cabello would really want. Now that even though there's five champions here and Kiana getting a huge ultimate off, huge supreme display of talent, God, just wiping Legacy Ambassadors off the map. That is the power of Kiana right there. Like I didn't expect them to expect Legacy Ambassadors to walk up that far for them, especially with the major cooldowns being not being available. That being Death Griffin's ultimate, Game Slave's ultimate. Even that guy's ultimate, I don't think that guy's ultimate was up either. 
So like not having dominance, not having the curse of the sad mummy, not having the demonic ascension, all of those abil those key abilities that I was telling you before around those three champions were not available to be used in that fight. And I think and, and stepping up was a yeah. very easy. Uh, not, I don't know about easy, but a huge play being made by Appreciate Me using the supreme display of talent to knock everybody into the wall for a clean ace. Well, if Legacy Ambassadors is trying to get back into that game, that most recent play was not gonna... has not helped their cause. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> now being down 7,000 gold. The Misfits... Three members from Iron Dragon look like they want to fight. But Death Griffin goes totally down. Takes down Death Griffin. Witchblade has the ultimate still available. He uses the Chrono Shift. Troll the new landing the hook and able to escape with his life. Three more going down on the side of Legacy Ambassadors. And it looks and like it will be four. That is nearly. Oh, and on the top side, you have Minipod and that guy just going at it. And that guy takes down. That guy for an unofficial ace. That is two straight aces in under three minutes. Mm -hmm. Baron is not up for another minute, so it could not uh, turn to an objective like that. But... They could have went for the Rift Herald here, but it doesn't seem like either team opted to do so. Or it doesn't seem like Iron Dragon opted to do so. And Misfits is scaling very hard now, having finished the Ice Worm Gauntlet to go along with the fully stacked tier to turn into the Muramana. Leandri's out on the side on, on I am mini pod with the dust blade and it looks like he's going uh, for the mortal reminder as well to re cut down the healing coming from game slaves Swain as well as uh, that guy's Renekton. The vision of Empire landing on two misfits but nothing really coming out of that. Death Center is landing onto that guy. One Mystic Shot, two Mystic Shot. True Shot Barrage going out, but unable to take down that guy. Tidal Wave coming out from Nami, uh, doesn't seem to find anybody, and Troll the Noob is backing off, as well as Misfits probably also stepping up to maybe do something. Redemption going out, but that guy being caught again by another Death Sentence from Troll the Noob's Thresh. Never move, landing on the Misfits. Misfits nearly going down for us to cleanse it with the QSS. Mystic shots are going out. Oh, no, no QSS. It was actually the Mikhail's Crucible from uh, Troll the Noob's Thresh that uh, allowed him to escape. But it looks like Witchblade wants to go back in on this despite his team limping away. But it doesn't look like he will. Seems like both want to reset, but they're going to pick up this top lane wave and dragon spawning in the next 50 seconds. Which, if Legacy Ambassadors want to make some big plays to come back into this game, they're going to have to set something up to pick off a member of uh, Iron Dragons before this dragon. Otherwise, they're just gonna get walk walk through most likely. Never move landing on or appreciate me and misfits. Standing there with the death hand death's hand. But no more cooldowns available. Diamonds going down almost immediately would appreciate me, which means that they are down and trying to find their way out. Game slave able to take the land and never move, but death Griffin landing a single target. First of this had mummy, but Minipod bringing uh, Keep Cakes into the death realm and able to kill her despite getting condemned. Troll the noob landing the death sentence onto Game Slave, which ends his life. And it looks like Minipod still wants more from that guy, but that guy has slice and dice available after getting hit by Death Grass. 
escapes with his life, with the rest of his team not so lucky. So even with Misfits out of the picture, uh, Mark Bell fan club is able to pick up the dragon and chase uh, the rest of the team down. Holden is landing another death sentence onto that guy, but survives and is forced to back off. Which blade dives into the base to pick up the kill on and it doesn't. Oh, it does pick up the Keef Cakes, but goes down immediately after to all of the CP on the side of Legacy Ambassadors, which is a pretty big shutdown that is given to Game Slave. But I don't think that shutdown alone is going to be enough. To make up for the 11,000 gold lead? Mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although there are mountain dragons left in this game, so if some... It looks like Legacy Ambassadors is going to need some kind of miracle. But if they are able to pick up those, uh, those mountain dragons, that'll make them a very tanky team and make it very difficult for Iron Dragons to secure kills. That guy flashes forward. It doesn't look forward. like they get a chance with that guy flashing forward. Death Sentence landing, Supreme Display of Skill also used, and this is the fight that Legacy Ambassadors was looking for. They might be able to pick up Appreciate Me, but it seems like they're only able to pick up Misfits here in this fight, despite using one, two, three, four ultimates. But this is why Iron Dragons cannot as underestimate the power of the wombo combo of these ultimates. And it looks like this hand that catches an Iron Mini Pod. The bubble missing, though. The Witchblade is caught by the Bandage Toss and the Curse of the Sad Mummy. Ults back and is able to pick up uh, Death Griffin anyway. And it seems as though Legacy Ambassadors, although having started off the fight very well, does limp away with just Keef Cakes to hold the... To hold whatever's left. And Markabella wants that kill as well. Appreciate me catches up to him and takes Keep Cakes out. Keep Very Cakes quick. greeting for the for the uh, for the pink ward, which is what caused that in the first place. Baron is up, and we see Markabello started up, even with three members uh, taking the top turret. Placing the lance in it, I thought Tolden might not have uh, taken it, but now that five members are there, that dragon is more than secured. And if you thought the game couldn't get any harder, look at the 15k gold lead and the Baron. Oof. So what odds, what odds would you put right now? Uh, uh, <laughs> um, miraculous. <laughs> I, I can't quantify, quantify it, but I will put it into words as miracle status. There, there, there needs to be a miracle in this game for Legacy Amb Ambassadors to come back, because Death Griffin hasn't even completed his uh, his uh, Leandri's Torment, which is his huge damage damage spike. But he's that would also mean he's not tanky enough to stand in front of all of these champions that have a lot of damage, and neither is Renekton, because that is their front line, and neither of these champions are big enough to soak all of the damage coming in from Misfits, from Appreciate Me, from Witchblades, and from Iron Minipod. It's, it, and there's no damage really coming from uh, from Keef Cakes, who is 0-10 at this point, just getting hit by every hook available. Not even having a second item finish while uh, Misfits is, all of Misfits is looking towards their third and fourth items. And if, even Witchblades has a 18 stack Magi Soul Sealer. That's how confident he is in this game. Mo Diamonds just getting pulled by Minipod's uh, Death Grasp and the Death Sentence landing on to that guy. But for some reason, Death Griffin heading in with the Bandage Toss, landing the Curse of the Sad Mummy, but no damage is coming out. And they are just getting dove underneath this tower for free. Is there nothing that. Legacy Ambassadors can do, and it will spell four going down on Legacy Ambassadors. It looks like they will 
go for this inhib. The inhibitor being down, causing more super minions, applying even more pressure to this game. But I think this game is all but over. They're looking for the double inhib actually, while there's still 15 seconds on any of the, either of the two major damage dealers on the side of Legacy Ambassadors. Personally, I would have went for this inhibitor, but it, oh, they are going for it with just two members though. A little bit risky, but uh, it looks like they will still get it. Yep, two inhibitors going down and the Mountain Dragon Soul, which makes the game infinitely more harder with the extra shield on top of every single player. It's pretty much a 300 damage shield on all of the members of Iron Dragon. Going over this game in commanding fashion. Even more dominant than our last game. Mm -hmm. Red buff spawning that's going to go over to the side of uh, Iron Dragon. So it looks like Witchblade is going to steal it for himself though rather than give it to... Uh, Misfits, who is across the map. And Witchblade's catching out Mo Diamonds, just one-shotting him. Not even a chance to respond to that. Martin Cabello pushing in two separate lanes and not really opting for the third. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Oh, now they are opting for the third as that wave catches into the tower and will pick up this last. Will they? Mordekaiser just walking up, not even caring. Ulting Mo Diamonds and probably just one shots him to again. And appreciate me just exploding Keith Cake. There's just no way that Iron that Legacy of Bastards comes back in this game. And that will spell the, the end of Legacy Ambassadors. That dominant performance will unfortunately put Legacy Ambassadors to 0-4, but it will put Martin Cavilla Fan Club up to 3-1, and uh, tied for second place with Endgame. <laughs> it was almost a 20,000 gold lead. Another 1,200 gold than it would have been. But even like looking at the damage charts, if we can pull those up, just across the board, all of the carries just putting out more damage than anything that uh, Legacy Ambassadors had in in store. But that seems to be the end of what we have. Uh, if you week as the... are watching now and you have not followed us yet, be sure to click that follow button. Uh, we're trying to get to 50 follows and affiliate status so we can offer you guys team emotes so you can support your favorite team. So make sure to click follow if you haven't already. Um, yeah, I guess that uh, might be it for the day. Um, but once again, thank you for watching. That was our last game, the fourth game, uh, fourth game, game four, week three, week three, and we hope to see you all next week for week four. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. forgot I I mixed up with my days. Today is Saturday.